It's the mask me for me. Jesus. COVID and these masks are playing my skin. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Curly Roots. I am Francesca. This is going to be my first video and I wanted to show you guys some of my houseplants. I'm a big houseplant advocate. I've recently got into them probably like the last like eight months or so. Earlier on this year at the start of COVID, I was really, really into them. And since then, I've accumulated about 50 or so. I don't have too many. I would definitely like to expand my collection, but I'm doing it gradually. I want to make sure that I'm picking out ones that I like and that I love and that fit my space and that I can take care of. So I wanted to show you guys that today. I'm going to be doing a quick little tour of all the plants I have. I'm going to redo this video vlog style. I'm going to be having the names placed in the bottom of the screen just so you guys can see them. And just in case I miss like name them or I skip over one or I don't know like the proper name for them. Proper name for them? <laughs> one of the Calatheas I'm looking at right now. I know it's a Calathea but I don't know the name of it. So situations like that I'll just put it down there and I'm going to try to remember each place that I got them from and kind of list them for you guys. So if you guys are in the Sacramento area you guys can definitely go ahead and find them. Excuse me. I know when I'm usually watching plant videos like this I don't usually see people who are like in Sacramento it's usually like LA like people who are like across the country and things like that. So I thought this would be a really good resource to kind of show you guys where I get my plants in Sacramento. If you have places that you go to in Sacramento or just the surrounding area please let me know down below i'm always looking for new shops to go to um i'm gonna go ahead and get started i'm getting like all blabbery before i go though last thing if you have any suggestions and things you want to see from me please let me know in the comments below if that's like curly hair vegan house plants anything like that let me know i'm definitely an open book and want to talk about it if you enjoy the video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel i'll see you guys soon okay so this is kind of the view that you come you come into when you walk into this room there's nothing there now and then for the most part this is where a majority of my plants live on this shelf right here i got this shelf originally from facebook marketplace i don't remember where they got it from i never asked um before i moved i had these all organized by what these were currently they're all kind of like packed in there so they don't really have permit spot the only thing that's kind of organized is this is my hoya shelf for now I'm gonna start from the top and work my way down. For right here, I have my first plant right here, which is definitely a splurge and wishlist plants for me. This is an Anthurium crystallinum, I believe. I'm still trying to debate if it's like a silver blush, I believe it is, or not. You can't really see it in the video. Let me see if I can get in the light. Uh, it's not really doing it justice. Oh, I don't wanna spill it either. Um, it has like some silver like blushing to it. But I definitely love this one. It has tons of new growth. Um, these two bigger leaves here and here are new. Those were not here before when I bought it. And I bought it at, uh, what is it called? Ooh, it's escaping me. I completely forgot it. I'll put it on the screen. I know his name is Jonathan. He's a recent discovery of mine in the Sacramento area. And I absolutely love his shop. I just forgot it. It's, ugh, I left my brain. Okay, and then behind it is the new Calathea that I was talking about. This is, I think it's Calathea, it has with a W. And I don't want to butcher the name, so I'll have it on the screen. But I absolutely love these velvety soft leaves. And then like the purple, purple, purple kind of maroon bottoms. It also has tons of new growth on the side. Again, it's the velvet leaves for me. So I definitely got that one. Here in the front, I have a couple of plants that I'm trying to try out in LECA. These are plants that were like overgrown, weren't doing well, or like really just like not healthy. And I thought, why not try it out in LECA? Because they were already in water. This is a Reforda, not Reforda, Jesus, uh, Tetrasperma, mini, mini Monstera. I'll put the proper one on there. I swear I know these plants. It's just, I'm on the spot. So that's a tetrasperma. Right here is a silver sword. This one I was so devastated when I had to cut up. I cut up because it was all one plant on one single stem. It was very lengthy and I wasn't liking the way it was growing. So I went and cut that one up. This is also a silver sword. This one, its leaves are huge. I love it. Hopefully 
it grows some roots and I'm able to pot it back up. This one actually has some new growth, if you guys can see it right there. So, so far it's doing well. In the back, really thriving, kind of, see if I can move this. All crazy is my horsehead philodendron doing really well, getting nice mature leaves. The only thing that's kind of making me worried about this, if you guys know any information on why it's doing that, it's just kind of like this weird yellowing and like dots in the center. I think it might be like a fungus or something. Hopefully not. But yeah. And then moving on, this was something that I also got on Facebook and was another splurge. I think I paid about like 50 bucks for this. And it's going to be my McDowell, I believe it is called. And it's actually just a stump in like bark and sphagnum moss. Oh, with a new growth point. I didn't notice that. Um, this leaf right here was actually grown in my care, so it came with one leaf before, and this one is coming in. And then I don't know what this marking is right here, or why it's lighter here. Um, maybe variegation, but I doubt it. And then when it was unfurling, it did get a bit damaged. So you can see the damage there. And then this is one of my favorite Hoyas at the moment that is not on my Hoya shelf because it is too tall. This is my Hoya Macrophylla, I believe it is. And I believe it's the Variegata one. It has white variegation. It actually has white and cream and light green on this plant. It's a little harder to see against the wall. The wall is a bit shiny. But I have it on a little wood stick and it's actually doing really well. Um, it's definitely thirsty and pushing out a lot of new leaves, which is really good. And then speaking of pushing out new leaves and thriving, this is my Alocasia Regal Shield. This is actually my first houseplant to like flower for me. Um, this is a shriveled up version of what it was a couple days ago, but this is my first alocasia to flower, which I thought was really awesome. And then moving down to my Hoya shelf, I have one of my three, I believe, pubicalyxes. I absolutely love Hoya pubicalyxes or pubicalyxes. I'm not sure the name. I know it kind of like varies depending on who you're talking to. I fell in love with this one because it is trailing, was all twisted up and intertwined in each other with like tons of new growth and leaves. And I am team trailing all the way, though that Hoya is staked up. I do love a trailing, this long, pretty Hoya. So that's my Hoya pubicalyx there. I got this one from Green Acres. I completely forgot to say where I got it. Green Acres. This one from, was also from Green Acres. And this one was from someone on Facebook. I think I said that one. This is Facebook. Facebook. And I think I spoke on those ones. In the back here, I have one of my... One of my... I think I only have one, actually. I think I sold the other one. I have a Hoya Crinkle 8, who's doing actually really good. Um, this little spot here, a couple of them I think were overwatered. I get a little excited when it comes to watering my Hoyas. But I think it's slowly recovering. It's got cute little splashing and new growth coming in. So put that one back. Here in the back, I have one that was a gift. This is Facebook and this is Facebook as well. Um, and these are Facebook marketplaces. So this isn't some group or anything like that. These are people that I bought off of from Facebook. This is something that was sent as a gift. I believe it's Hoya Chelsea. It does have like little indentations that could possibly be a crinkle eight, but I'm gonna go ahead and say Chelsea. This is also in Lekka as well. And it seems to be doing well. You can kind of see its roots and things coming through. Oh, where can I see it? Oh, I swear I saw one. There's one right there. Um, doing really well. And then, boom, this is another one that I got. This is one of my favorite Hoyas right now. These two right here. Oh, I remember the name, it's Floriculture. Jonathan from Floriculture. So this one and these two Hoyas right here are from Floriculture in Sacramento. Jonathan is the owner. I believe him and his wife own the place. And it's absolutely amazing. So this is a Hoya. Here, I'll pull up the name for you. There you are. Um, I had no idea about this Hoya until I bought it. I thought, honestly, it was like a huge public alex. But then I saw the leaves and like the veining of it and the splashing and it's just so beautiful and I feel like there's one of these leaves in here I have to find the one where like the veining on it is just like breathtaking so is this one 
And then this is the controversial DS70. What's the other one? Like Batonii Hoya. I got this a small little cutting also from Floriculture. It's really beautiful. It's in a kind of moss, leka bark mix. A lot of the Hoyas that he gives me come in a kind of mix like that. We're really super duper chunky. Nice airy for the roots. It's very cute and velvety. It hasn't done much for me. I've grown a couple new leaves in my care, but nothing too crazy to write home about. And then this one here, if you guys know the name of this one, can you guys please leave it down in the comments below? He wasn't sure which one it is and told me it was an unidentified Hoya. But if you look at the leaves, they're very long, really pretty veining, minimal splashing, but the veining is very interesting. I've never seen something like this. So if you know, please let me know. And then it has some new growth going on right here, which I love. Moving on to the back is another one of my full Hoya pubicalyxes. This is another one I got from Green Acres. You can definitely see the differencing and differencing the difference in splashing from this one to this one, which definitely has like more minimal splashing. So though I have multiple pubicalyxes, they're all very different. And then in the back, I have my Hoya compacta, my Hoya Hindu rope, which I got from Facebook from a woman named Kim. She was absolutely amazing. Um, it's a lot longer than this, but I kind of have it all like twisted within itself just so it's kind of getting all the sun and nothing is thinning out. It's one of my favorite Hoyas right there just because I feel like the look and the body of it is so different. Then in the front is another one of my favorites just because I feel like it's such a beautiful and just striking Hoya, which is my Hoya Obovada. It's in this cute little pot. I think I got it from like Home Goods, TJ Maxx, one of those kind of stores, maybe Marshalls. And this Hoya has done nothing but push out new growth. You can kind of see one there, new ones over there. All these tips have new growth pumping out on them, and it's been amazing. I'm hoping that one of my Hoyas this year, in the next couple months, I doubt it because it's getting ready to be winter, um, go ahead and bloom for me, or at least hopefully next year bloom for me. I want to get a Hoya Lacanosa and Bella because I know they're really prone to bloom pretty easily but moving down to the next shelf i messed up you're gonna start to see that in a couple of my plants coming down you can see a lot of browning and like softening in the leaves i was trying to be cute the other day and i was trying to film a video of me repotting a couple of plants and i forgot that some of these plants were sitting out in the sun so a few of them did get st scorched and I'm like heartbroken about it because this is my philodendron what is it cream splash not sport silver stripe there you go it has cream splash silver stripe I don't know why it's so hard for me to say I'm just having a stroke um it was one of the plants that really got burnt up and I really fell in love with this one because it was so full and so thick and now you can see just about every leaf is scorched and pissed off at me. So I'm really hoping to continue to have it grow new leaves and it kind of like bounce back from this. It's not looking too good right now, but I'm hoping it kind of bounces back. Behind that is my domino cactus. I have a few new cactuses that I've been recently getting into. This one has been amazing. I actually had this one blossom earlier this year, the beginning of spring. The flowers are actually very pretty. They come out of these little white dots at the top you can kind of see the neon green growth at the top which is new growth this one was from green acres this one i believe was from actually from walmart in the little garden center and then next to it again we have a bigger uh tetrasperma if you can kind of compare like this leaf to the leaf up top can i show it to you again it's so much bigger it's so crazy how big these things can get. So I originally potted up the original mother plant that this one was cut off from into this one, hoping to get a bigger, thicker plant. Um, this was from Green Acres, and I got it for $15. Um, it's not the fullest thing ever, but it definitely has new growth and large leaves. That's kind of what I was wanting to get. Next to that, I have a bear paw succulent, I believe it's called. I don't know its actual name. Let's see. There we go. I got this one from Green Acres. And I think I got it for $3. It 
And I just fell in love with how cute it is. Look at those little baby paws. That one's been pretty easy. I don't have the best luck with succulent type things just because I tend to overwater it or underwater it and not understand what it needs. But I'm trying to be a little better about being aware of my plants and what they're needing. Excuse me, I'm trying to squeeze around. And then right here I have my philodendron cordatum. I believe it's just a heart leaf philodendron. Definitely needs a wipe down. You can kind of see here one of its leaves did get a little scorched. This one was for the most part in the sun, so you can kind of see it's nice and full up top, nice and green. Wasn't too heavily impacted by being in the heat. Down here, I have one of my two Monsteras. Oh, there's my foot in the mirror. This is my smaller, more juvenile version of it. This one was also scorched, but this is scorched while I was in my car, while I was moving to the house that we currently live in, but... I love this one. There's a ton of new growth, and I would love to be able to grow a Monstera from juvenile to its mature form. I have a nice big mature one over there in the corner that I love, but I kind of wanted to watch this one grow. And then I have a Sansevieria or a snake plant in this corner. This is actually my aunt's. Ooh, this is from Green Acres, excuse me. This is my aunt's. I actually got it for her, so I don't want to speak too much about that one. I'm just holding it for her until she finds her way over here and then and that was from green acres a lot of my plants are from green acres and then this one is a prayer plant it's just your plain original one this one i definitely have fits with where it does really well and then there's times where it gets yellow and is upset with me it's definitely full on one side and definitely bald <laughs> everywhere else uh, i'm wondering this plant really loves humidity and to be left alone for the most part and I tend to be a helicopter mom who wants to be very involved with my plants when they don't need it. So I'm working on kind of letting go and allowing the plants to be who they need to be. And then in the back, this one actually is my snake plant. I have a Sansevieria in the back. This is one of my first couple plants that I got just because I heard they're so hardy and like impossible to kill. Which as a new plant mom, that is... Oh, excuse me for the shakiness while I get up what I needed and then I have a couple more in this room and then I'm going to show you around my house. This is a new addition to my plant room that I absolutely love. This is just a beast that I almost killed. This is a huge jade pothos, pothos, whatever you prefer. And this was also one of the plants that were sitting out in the sun and I was devastated. Almost brought me to tears. I paid $39 for this. Ooh, $38, excuse me, $38.50 at Green Acres for this. And this thing is massive. I don't feel like where it's at is doing it justice, but this thing is huge. And it trails down. It's thick. It was in like perfect condition when I got it. And I thought I was being cute and can bring it outside and let it get some sun. I could water it, wipe down its leaves because it had a little bit of like dust from being at the plant shop and I got too excited and tried to be too cute and I scorched some of the leaves as you can tell like right here I've tried to pick on pick on pick off most of them but hopefully it will forgive me it is a pothos and they do kind of regenerate and bounce back pretty quickly but I was definitely devastated and then in this corner let's work our way up here this was something that I got off of Etsy and I was very frustrated with. This is a Peperomia Incana, I believe it is. A very tiny, itty bitty one. I'm very grateful to have it, but I was very upset. I waited like two or three weeks for this plant and paid $30 for this tiny piece of it. And I was very upset. The other plant they sent with me to be nice was like burnt to crisp and just died because it was in the mail for two like two weeks a week but it's fine we're gonna be grateful that we have it it's just making that cute little shelf right there look good this isn't the final setup for these shelves it's just what i kind of threw up there we actually put them up there yesterday and then the last plant in this room is just my huge big mama oh i lied i have one more excuse me this is my Monstera Deliciosa. This is one of my first plants that I actually got. It was actually a gift from an old coworker of mine. Her name is Snowy. If you're watching this, thank you, Snowy. I really appreciate it. I still love this plant and it's still alive. Pushing out new growth. 
you can see a new leaf right here so I can kind of turn it and it actually has fenestrations and holes and stuff so I'm very excited about that you can definitely see the difference between this one and this one in the corner over here and then my last plant in this room just sitting on the day bed for right now is my string of hearts I'm actually so in love with this one I'm gonna bring it to the light so you guys can kind of appreciate it this is my string of hearts it's super duper full with tons of new growth it's beginning to trail you can kind of see at the top it had a blossom I don't know if I can see it on the camera but it was blossoming it may have died off but I'm very much in love with this one and just how thick and easy it is I can't wait to have it super duper long and trailing I'm trying to decide if I want to put it in this corner if I want to put it in this corner right here when you first walk in and just kind of have a curtain of string of hearts trailing down I haven't decided all right so this is the overview for this room and then I'm getting ready to bring you throughout the house okay so this is into our bedroom and I'm gonna show you the plant that I have on my nightstand this is gonna be my alocasia black velvet this is another one of my alocasia that's actually doing really well that I thought might not do the best let me go ahead and show you that it has big leaves this is the newest leaf right here oh you know what it's actually this new one right here and they're actually a pretty nice size they get bigger and bigger each time that a new one grows in sorry put that down and it gets really good light in here with this window right here you can kind of see hopefully in the video and then i have a really sad boston fern Ooh, that one was from facebook i forgot to say this was one that i got from green acres i believe i have it right here green acre the boston fern and it's not doing too well i think it's thirsty I don't know what it's doing. I think I'm going to actually put it outside because I don't feel like it's thriving right here. But these are the two that we have in the room. I'm definitely wanting to add another one. Maybe on Babe's side I can try to sneak in a plant. But I'm not sure. Okay, so this is the living room right now. We only have one plant. Before I did have a really huge, beautiful, thick fiddle leaf fig. And then I had that in May, I believe, when we first bought the house and things were going well with the house but there was a time in which we weren't here for a couple weeks and i for forgot to come in here and because it was during the summer when this window gets really good light it got really hot in here and like just ate the fiddle leaf fig and i was so upset because the plant was like a hundred something bucks i got you know what i lied i didn't get it in may i actually got it in july for my birthday my birthday present to myself and that's like the most i've ever spent on the plant and then it died and it was a whole beautiful tree if i have a photo i'll post a photo right here so you guys can see it right now i only have the small little one that i got because it kind of reminds me of fall i got it from my job and it's just a neon pothos which is doing really well i didn't think i would like the neon look but i like the contrast from all the dark greens that i have and then across the way over here i have a couple more plants in my dining room I'm gonna go to this little like weird guy on the floor. This is my, what is it? Reflector, what is it? Dipambakia Reflector. This is one of my rescue recovering plants. I originally got this one and it was a lot more like variegated and just striking. And then again, with me scorching my plants, I left it in the car while I was continuing to shop for more plants, just being greedy and wanting more plants. And it like, scorched all the leaves and since then it's been recovering and pushing out new growth doing really well but it's definitely lost its signature like reflector look but still beautiful nonetheless and then i have it by itself because i saw a few mealybugs on that it's the only pest that i've had issues with is mealybugs so far hopefully i can get those under control and not have to deal with any pest and then looking at my dining room table, these are not permanent plants. The only permanent plant is this, almost like just jab it, is this ZZ plant right here. Um, these are just like new ones that I'm acclimating to the space and the lighting in here. This is my burrow's tail or my donkey tail. I got this from Green Acres and I think I got it for 13 bucks. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, 13.50. So I didn't think that was very... I thought that was a very good price given how like full it is and like intact and not all like missing its 
little leaves. I know this is very sensitive and temperamental a bit. Next to that, I have another plant in Lekka. I have my alocasia, not my alocasia, where am I going? This is my Monstera adansonii narrow leaf form with beautiful fenestrations on it. It's in Lekka in a little reservoir. Um, these are just cuttings from another plant that wasn't doing too well. This is my ZZ plant, just my normal ZZ. I definitely want to get a raven because I feel like it's very beautiful and I don't have very many dark plants in my collection. This plant is by far the easiest. Everybody says it is. Completely stand by it and just vouch for that. I have it in this spot here. It gets really good light. I water it every time that I pay my rent. So once, or my mortgage, that's about it. And then again, it has really good growth going on right now. A whole new stock right here. You can see another one here, a leaf behind here, another one here. I believe there's another one around the corner. And then I have it in a nursery pot inside. I got this one from Green Acres as well. And then this is just a little pretty pot that I found from, I believe, Marshalls. And then this one is kind of a twin to the ones on the table over there. This is going to be a fern. I think it's just a curly fern. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't really have the name for it. I'm not a huge fan of ferns, but I just like resonated with this one very well. And again, this is about the extension to fall decorating, which you're going to see in my house. I'm not a big seasonal decorator, so this is my way of participating. But it doesn't have some new growth in there. You can see it. Some of these new leaves here are a little bit lighter. I just really liked it. I thought it was very simplistic. I kind of like to kind of like sp sprawling out effect of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then in the corner here, we have my philodendron lickety split. It is upset. It's dealing with, I believe, not root rot, but overwatering. So maybe a bit of root rot right now. So you can kind of see it's big and beautiful. But you're seeing like crisping around the leaves, but I'm also seeing yellow leaves and then like some squishy bits inside. So I think it's definitely root rot or overwatering, so I'm gonna have to go in there and figure out what's going on in there. And I almost forgot and skipped over these. These are a couple shelves that I have hanging in the corner right here. This is another one of my cacti that I absolutely fell in love with. What is going on with my voice? <clears throat> this is a rat tail cactus. I wanted to originally get a donkey tail cactus and hopefully in the future I will get one. But so far I've settled with a rat tail cactus and it gives me the same effect, just a bit thinner. And I absolutely love it. It's just doing its own thing. It's very curly, very like low maintenance. I water it when I feel like it needs a little drink. It's got a bunch of new growth up top. Not bad. And getting some long tendrils. And then here I have my Philodendron Mikens, which is doing really well. I got this one from Facebook. This was actually Green Acres. Um, I got some from Facebook. It was a lot smaller when I first got it. If I had the original picture that I got when I first bought it, I'll put it right here on the screen so you can kind of compare it. It's a lot bigger too. It's actually like curled up in there. It's doing really well. It's not as thick and long as I would like, but it's definitely doing a lot better. And you can see a bunch of new growth here. So I'm not going to complain. Definitely really beautiful. And I love how this terracotta pot has this like ombre effect on it. It's very beautiful. And then kind of panning over and going into my kitchen. I do have a couple plants in the kitchen, starting in this corner right here. It's gonna be a little dark, sorry. Is my peace lily plant. It does have a little scorch mark that's from the waffle maker and Babe not being aware of the plant, but it's fine, I've since forgiven him. Um, just a simple peace lily. It has some small like little markings on it. It's dirty and needs to be rinsed off. But other than that, it's pretty easy. Constantly pumping out little new growth. No major complaints there. Panning over, I have my Syngonium. I forgot the name, so I'm completely spacing out on it. If I can remember what it is or what it's called, I'll put it on the screen. Um, I fell in love with this one because I like the dark kind of army green that it has to it. And then a really big statement piece in my kitchen is my Scandapsis Pixis, Scandapsis Pixis Exotica. That like, is always a struggle for me to say. I have that one hanging up on one of my counters, on my cabinets. Oh, you can see that little leaf right there. I should have picked that for the video, but this is real. Um, otherwise, it's doing really well. It's really thick and beautiful and just trailing down the cabinet. I want to create like a big thick curtain right here of just leaves. 
and you can kind of see how like massive some of these leaves are my favorite leaf is this one right here absolutely huge so i have one there and then panning over i'm just gonna kind of gently go over the dishes that i have in the sink i have my scandapsis pixis or dearies i believe it is this one's hanging from a macrame hanger in the ceiling. Um, you can definitely see like the size different in the leaves. And then slight splashing. A couple of leaves are curling, so it might be thirsty. I'll go ahead and water that after the video. And then the last one that I have in here is this plant right here. And I completely lost the name of it. I like look it and took my breath away. Um, I believe it's like Brantianum. I believe it's Philodendron Brant Brantianum. This is like a super pixelated leaves. It's very popular the last couple months. I'm really easy. I got this one off of Facebook. I forgot the name of the person, but really good. Tons of new growth. Definitely a bit funky. You know what? That's a lie. I did not get off of Facebook and I got it off an Etsy seller. I got it off an Etsy. I forgot who I got it off of. If I can remember the shop, I'll put it on the screen as well. But I got it off of Etsy. And then this one was Green Acres and then Green Acres. I think that was actually $22 for this huge thing, which is super duper awesome.